And here is the scene of the crime. Chief is a family-owned, Nebraska-based company comprised of seven diverse brands. Chief, trusted, tested, true. Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful Monday morning, October 23rd. We are going to knock out a lot of harvest today. Isn't that right, Grant? Good morning, Pepper. <laughs> Come on. Nope, nope. Oh. Pepper. You stinker. I think that one's... Oh, nope. <gasps> nope, nope, nope. Uh, <laughs> Okay. I was taking some bagels out to the fields. <laughs> I think they're uh, Pepper's breakfast now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Do you think that's funny? Well, yeah. I already ate my bagel. Yeah, uh-huh. Oh my goodness. You want some, little guy? Anyways, like I was saying, it is a beautiful, perfectly still morning, 42 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to get so hot today in the upper 80s. What a crazy swing. Grant's heading off to check some fields. I'm going to take the fuel trailer to the field that we've been working on for the past couple days, get everything ready to go before we start our day. First, just have to get it pulled out of the shop. bit of a problem. First round in, I blew up another gearbox. This outside one here, the snapping rolls quit spinning. So luckily, the local John Deere dealership, Acres in Aurora, has a 16 row head. They're going to let us demo for the day to keep us moving. So we're going to park this one and go hook up to that 16 row. We got the new corn head out here. It was parked over here. <laughs> A propane tank here. Looks like it skidded off the highway. That's a find right there. Nice. Four extra rows makes that corn head look pretty big. I was thinking that uh, propane tank was like 30 inches away from being in the cornfield. And if that propane tank would have been underneath our corn head with the choppers on it, that could have been really bad. Probably would have destroyed a lot of things. Besides finishing this field, which is a major goal for today's harvest agenda, mm -hmm. we have two things that we need to get done. First, we need to remove an old pivot stop that we don't use anymore, and it's in the way of a driveway. It's making it really hard for trucks and trailers to get in and out of this field. So we And someone's already hit it. It is completely not functional. Uh, <laughs> uh, someone's minivan absolutely obliterated this pivot stop already, so we need to finish removing it. Then we can really get in and out of this driveway with trucks and trailers, and it'll just be easier for everyone to navigate around here. Then our second job besides harvesting, we have a stuck pivot. We need to get it unstuck so we can move it and harvest all of the corn underneath of it. But first, the pivot stop. To fill you in on the events of this morning, I had a film crew come out. Oh, that's part of being Laura Farms. I did a little bit of kind of like a photo shoot thing for our fuel trailer. So that's gonna be an advertisement that's coming out and I think it's going to look really cool. People came out with huge cameras and sound equipment. It was awesome. But while I was doing that, the corn head broke. A gearbox went out. Luckily, we are back up and running because we were able to find a 16 row head to demo. The head that we're running normally is only a 12 row. So the possibility of someday maybe updating our equipment to a 16 row would be awesome. Our planter is a 16 row. And so if we had a corn head that matched that, that would be ideal.
on stuck so that we can move it. Look at how beautiful this corn is. So straight and tall. It is a beautiful day outside. Blue sky, some Toy Story clouds in the sky. Wow, just beautiful. I love living in the country. Nebraska is just a beautiful place to live. And here is the scene of the crime. My goodness, you'd think that we wouldn't still be dealing with stuck pivots like this, but uh, we are. My goodness. What do you think, Grant? It's almost out of the way. So close. This is the last tower. The very center of the pivot is right there. The rest of it is out of the way. We just need it 10 more feet than the combine could get through, but it just had to get stuck. Here's a perfect example of why I like the tall, skinny tires. You look at those tires, none of them are even stuck. But these shorter, fatter ones, they make huge tracks. I've talked about this before, but we just had such an incredibly dry summer. I am so grateful that we had pivots because we ran them around in so many circles. Look at how deep that pivot track is. Honestly, I think this second wheel inside the corn might be kind of stuck too. Look at that. Just caked on there. This track is two feet deep. Holy cow. Our strategy is going to be Grant at the pivot panel box so that he can walk it forwards and backwards and I'll be here at the tower using the telehandler to pull it out. that panel box in the distance. He's going to send the rest of the pivot walking. You see, now we are going to tighten up the chain and be ready for when the pivot starts walking this way. On a different note, check out this corn. Pretty nice looking, right? Pretty proud of it. Pivot stop is removed. Pivot is unstuck. Now we can take the telehandler back home, come back to the field, and I don't know, we'll see where I am. Maybe I'll be in the combine, testing out the new 16 row head. Maybe I'll be in the grain cart. Maybe I'll be in a truck. It's always an adventure. Taking a shift in the green cart, we definitely need use of both of the carts that we have right now with the 16 row head. In taking four more rows of corn each pass really makes a huge difference. The combine gets full way faster. So today we have the combine running at max capacity, two green carts and three semi trucks.
here's where the pivot got unstuck from. Made it all the way. Cut around the pivot point. We are making excellent progress on this field. Here's the handiwork of our pivot stop removal. So, so, so nice. So much more room. The field we're harvesting right now has three quarter mile long rows. So it feels like the corn just goes forever. Like you could get lost out here. On Saturday afternoon, Gage got a chance to run the combine. He did an excellent job. He was probably running the show, I wanna say for four or five hours. He did an awesome job. He filmed a couple segments. Here he is. Guess where I'm at today, or for a little while. I'm in the combine. Yeah, something different. It's way different actually. So. Last year, I got to drive it for like seven hours or so, and I had a blast. I love, I love running like equipment in general. It don't matter what it is, skid steers, excavators, tractors, combine. I just, the well, combine is a way different experience from someone that's driven grain cart most of their life. It, it's a lot. It's, it's kind of weird being in control of like when the cart comes up to you and all this stuff. Yeah, I'm in the combine today. Grant and Laura are driving grain cart right now. Oh, it's weird. One of them two should be in here, but no, it's me. Yeah, it, it's really fun. I'll be honest, It's I can do it. I'd run this instead of grain cart. Well, it's still in the combine, which is really nice. Um, at night, it's a lot different too. It's just, you get, I don't, it's hard to explain but like when I, I run grain cart, and that's like all I've ever ran is a grain cart. It's a lot different at night in the combine than in the grain cart. I mean, it is during the day too, don't get me wrong. But yeah, I'm still here. Honestly, my opinion of the combine, I like it. I'd run it full time. I'd be, I could be, be fine with that, but I know my spot, grain cart, and I'm fine with that, but Yep, we're still trucking along. We gotta fill one more truck and then fill the grain cart. I think we're gonna call it night. It's been a long day. It's almost it started at about eight this morning. It's like seven thirty right now. Having fun though. A lot to get used to. There's a lot of different buttons and all that stuff you gotta get down and it's a lot, I'll be honest. It's a lot. Per usual, Gage is one of the biggest assets of our operation, health-wise. He does an excellent job, and we are very grateful for him. With the 16-row head, the combine is not able to make it all the way through a pass without being full. So he goes until he's almost full, then cuts over into the other rows of corn, puts the auger out, I pull up beside him, he unloads, I back up, and we continue cutting a new pass through. I think turning the lights on the equipment makes everything look so cool. I am signing off for the evening. Not because we are done. I'm guessing we'll be out here for another hour. My phone is about to die, so I don't think I'll be able to film an ending clip much longer after this. I just wanted to say a huge thank you to you guys for watching all of these videos. I'm loving putting out daily harvest vlogs, as you guys know. Just really keeps everyone updated with day-to-day -day operations on Laura Farms. You guys are a very loyal audience, and I consider myself incredibly lucky to get to present myself to you guys almost every single day. We are almost to 500,000 subscribers. We still have several days of harvest left. I think we're going to hit my goal, which is so, so, so cool. So thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already, now's your chance. We have Laura Farms shirts and sweatshirts and jackets available at bunkerbranding.com. If you wanna check those out, you can find those below the video. <sighs> Good night, you guys. I love you and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.